So for tonight's yoga class, um, two blocks and a strap. And then we're actually going to start um, lying down on our back and doing some breath work. So you won't need any of the props to start. Simply come to a place that is comfortable. I'm gonna ask you to touch different parts of your body during this process. Um, just close your eyes. Start to seal your lips so that your breath becomes controlled through your nose and an ujjayi breath. You can start to feel the cultivation of the breath. Set yourself up so that your body can be secondary in your thoughts. You're setting yourself in a, in a place that is comfortable, that you can kind of just let your body melt and the physical start to drop away. And I'd like you to tune into the layer below the surface, and that is your energy. So I was asked by a friend to send me uh, some of the details that we went over during my 300 hour training. And when I started to look at some of the material, I remembered how much I enjoyed teaching about the subtle energetic qualities of the body. And in Sanskrit, they're called the vayus or the winds of, of change or of energy. So as you're lying here comfortably on your back, Allow yourself to drop down beyond the surface of the skin a little bit deeper. Notice your energetic quality right here lying on your back. So often we let our outside condition, so what's being put upon us, control our energy and for tonight's class, I'd like you to start to cultivate tools that will allow you to change your energy from within and then bring that energy forth. You know, there's, I think I start this class almost always talking about the weather or the temperature. So that's one outside variable that constantly affects us and how we feel and how we present in the world and also work deadlines, family, relationships, uh, all of those people that, you know, we see on a day-to-day -day basis really affect our energy. How can we start to get some of that back? All right. So, I'm going to move through these values and I'd like you to think about these as you lie here, very simple posture on your back. So the winds of prana or energy, and the first one is prana with a capital P. So uh, um, you can think of this as universal prana. And that is a energetic up lifting quality. Now I'd like you to move your hands onto your chest and take a deep inhale. Feel the chest rise beneath your hands. That inhale, that arise, that is what brings new vital energy into the body. And so by focusing on the breath and on the space that the breath physically fills in our body, we're able to feel and really notice that 
energetic, uplifting quality, that wind. Let's do that two more times, focusing on a strong inhale through your nose and focusing on that space in your body which lifts with your breath. Next, I want you to slide your hands down your body, placing your hands on either hip. So still lying on your back, fingers in, thumbs up, and your thumb can even, if you'd like to, come all the way into the crease of the navel. So the weight of your hands is heavy on your hips. This energy that is cultivated from this area of the body is apana. So prana and apana. Apana is a downward energy. I like to think of it as gravity and the comfort that can come with gravity upon our body. Now I'd like you to take a deep, long exhale. And notice how satisfying and grounding an exhale can be. This is the energy also of letting go, of allowing yourself to purify or filter. So letting go of things that are not benefiting you, that you're holding on to, that feel maybe even a little bit like a poison in your body. Take another exhale here, feeling the settling and the comfort and the grounding that come from that exhale. Now start to shift your hands up to your lower abdominal, so the space between your navel and your pelvis. In this area of the body is where there is a swirling or a mixing of energies. So we've got the uplift in the chest, we've got grounding in the hips, and then here is where those energies start to swirl. This is Samada, Samana with an N. So it's a balancing energy, simulation, integration, processing of emotions, a lot of digestive organs in there. <laughs> Anybody else eat their emotions? <laughs> so here you can feel a swirling and a mixing. And it's here that the equation for what is balance for you, what is perfect, is going to be uniquely yours. How much uplifting energy, how much grounding energy do you need? What else do you need to make yourself balanced and whole? So here I'd like you to take an inhale into that space. And then an exhale, letting some of the energy drop down to the hips. Then inhale. You deciding how long your inhale is and how long of an exhale you take. Feel that mixing of energies in this space, knowing that it is your unique mixology that creates a perfect harmony in your body, in your energy levels. All right. Now I'd like you to shift your hands up so your elbows are out to the side and fingertips are by your ribs. Vayana, with a V, Vayana, is the energy of expansion. I like to call to attention 
expansion and contraction a lot when we're moving through yoga postures. And here on your ribs, you can also feel that expansion. So it's a whole body, you know, almost like a vibrating throughout your skin. So if you feel maybe a pulsation or an energetic vibration somewhere else in your body, feel free to move your hands there if you can reach it <laughs> lying on your back. This energy is very much so associated with your nervous system. And so that's all throughout the body. And that is almost like your aura, how you start to present yourself in this world. So the energy that you mix up that is uniquely you and that starts to radiate out from your body. And then moving your hand up to your throat, take an inhale, and then exhale, make a humming sound so that you can actually feel a vibration in your throat. Spanda is also energy of vibrational energy. So we can actually feel that vibration here when we exhale in a hum. Hmm. So Udana is how we take that energy and start to manifest it in the world. So through speech and growth, through concentration, through dreaming, it's actually how we present and physically manifest how we interact with people. That is the energy that we allow, that we give away freely. So do that two more times, making a humming noise on your exhale so that you can feel that vibration. And then we'll touch back on these as we move through the practice tonight and maybe noticing what the poses feel if you feel uplifted expanded like you want to hum uh, uh, grounded or like there's a mixing of energy so start to notice how you can feel into the energetic shift so that layer beneath the physical aspect of the yoga practice all right and with that slowly roll onto your belly and i'll get some tunes started for us as we begin our practice well deepen further our practice <laughs> in a physical way All right, so lying on our belly, we're going to do a prone shoulder stretch. So bring your left ear to the mat, arms out to the side, teed. Start to roll onto the left side. Bring the right hand in so that you can push down into it. You can take that top leg and either set it behind the left knee or let your leg just straight back behind you. Opening into the shoulder, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And then exhale, roll back onto your belly. Right arm comes down and out to a T. So a T is a little bit stronger of a stretch. If that was too much for you, you can extend it fully out. Uh-oh, vacuum is coming towards me, no. All right, then bringing your right ear down to the mat. Start to roll onto the right side. Bring your left hand in so you can press into the mat. 
adjusting how much of a stretch you get in the right side and then top left leg can either set behind you or drape back long. Take a couple breaths here, slow and controlled through your nose. Notice if you want to lean into the inhale or the exhale. Slowly roll back into center. Bring your chin to the mat. Take your arms out long to your sides. Slowly keeping your gaze down, lift head, neck, and chest up. Draw your shoulder blades together. Lift your fingers up so your thumbs are off of the mat, pointing down. Lengthen your spine. Start to lift your legs up, keeping your pelvis heavy and grounded on the mat. But then extend, reach your crown of your head long and toes out in the opposite direction. Inhale. Maybe pull your shoulder blades together a little bit closer on your back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. What do you feel here in this pose? How has it started to shift your energy? Take another inhale. Exhale, bring your palms in, place them underneath your shoulders. Keep your legs lifted, tuck your toes, and then bring them down so the toes touch the mat. Draw your navel in. Inhale, lifting up into plank, and you can always keep the knees down and then come up. Plank pose, lower your hips down a little bit so that you have a long, straight line from heels up to shoulders and out through the crown of your neck or the crown of your head <laughs> along your neck. Inhale and exhale. Again, deep breath in and out. Start to bring your knees down to hover right off of the mat. Draw your hips back. Let your head hang. And once you can see your knees, begin to straighten your legs. Slowly unfolding into downward facing dog. Press your finger pads down, straighten your arms. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale. What does it feel like when your hips are higher than your head? When the piece that is grounding is above the energetic lift. This is an inversion. <laughs> Right, so we flip things upside down, sometimes just shake ourselves up, get out of our rhythm. Exhale. Inhale, slowly unwind yourself long back into plank. Then lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Bring your hands back behind you. This time, if you can, interlace your palms or use your strap across your back, grabbing onto the strap and tightening up as close as you can. Then lift shoulder blades up, draw them together, head up and pull your hands back towards your hamstring. Inhale, exhale. Start to straighten and energize your legs. Lift and hover them off the ground. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Can you pull your hands longer down your hamstring? Exhale. Sustain. Inhale. Can you lift your feet a little bit higher? 
Exhale, sustain. Inhale, release your hands. Place your hands on your shoulders, tuck toes. Keep your legs strong and active. Inhale, press up, plank. Exhale, lower your hips. Inhale, reach your spine up. Can you find expansion here? Exhale, sustain, ground. Feel your toes touching the ground, feel your fingertips touching the ground. Inhale. Exhale, sustain, keep your legs strong. Keep that wrapping energy up your hands, up your arms, into your shoulder, into your heart. And inhale. Exhale, start to bring your knees down to hover. Start to shift your hips back. Let your head drop down, gaze to your knees, and then begin to lift your legs towards straight. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Third time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, slowly lower your knees down. Keeping your knees and your hips right here stacked. Begin to walk your hands forward, Anahata Asana. You can keep fingertips pressing down or full palms, forehead down, elbows stay lifted. So if you want a little bit more stretch in the shoulder, that's when you'll pull your palms up and keep just finger pads resting down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. What is the energy that this pose brings into your body? And you don't need to remember the fancy names. Instead of worrying about that, just think about how it feels, how it maybe starts to shift your energy. Bring palms down. Lift your head up. Walk your hands in about one hand print, shift forward and come back into your downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch and lift the left leg high. Exhale, bend that knee, heel to butt, and then bring your knee forward. Come and step the left foot by the left hand. Step your right foot a little bit forward, setting up for Virabhadrasana one, warrior three. Press the right heel down in towards midline. Shift forward in your left knee and then reach and extend your arms forward and then up. Coming into Virabhadrasana one. So how does this posture feel in your body? Do you feel a lifting, an uplifting energy? Does the exhale bring some more grounding? Maybe it's a posture of balancing those two. Maybe you don't gravitate towards one more than the other. Continue to keep a steady cadence in your breath. When we're inhale. And exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. We're going to shift into skandhasana. So you're going to come just inside that left knee and then pull the back right toes up. Use your front elbow to scoop that knee back. And you can lift that front heel if you'd like. If you don't want to go down as far, you can bring hands down to the inside. 
Now we're going to start to shift Skandasana into the back leg. So if you'd like to, you can use your hands to walk yourself across or keep hands at heart center, transition to the back and lift the left toes up. And if you can, even with hands down, use the right hand to scoop the right knee back from the inside. Take a breath in and out. Inhale, come through center, come back to the front. This time everybody bring your hands down and walk yourself into a lunge facing the front. So right heel lifts up. Now start to heel toe that left leg across, coming into pigeon pose. Lift your chest, draw shoulder blades back. Inhale, start to lengthen your right leg long, maybe even walking it back. Exhale, inhale, exhale, walk yourself forward, coming into sleeping pigeon. Breathe in. You can use your blocks if you have them to support under your leg, maybe support under your forehead, whatever support would help you in pigeon tonight so that you're not so worried about how much you're stretching in that hip, but instead you can set yourself in a sustained position and again, sink that one layer deeper just below the surface of the skin. How are you balancing your energy? How are you healing yourself so that you can manifest and present yourself in the world in the way you want to be seen? Continue to breathe here, a stable and steady breath. Noticing the subtle shifts. And begin to lift your head, walk your hands back in if they are extended. Plant your hands down, tuck your toes and step back into downward facing dog. Deep breath in and out. And inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Or right leg, sorry. Right leg. Exhale, bend your right knee so your heel comes towards your butt. Draw side of ribs, shift forward. Plant your right foot over by your right hand. Draw your chest forward. Step the left leg in. Ground your heel down towards midline. Stack ankle and knee, press down firmly through your right leg, and then begin to sweep your arms forward and up. Inhale, exhale into your Virabhadrasana to warrior pose. Gaze towards the front, breath in and out. And inhale. Exhale. And notice what this posture brings up for you. How does it shift your energy from being in downward facing dog? One more breath in. Exhale. Hands come down into heart center. Start to shift them to the inside of that right leg. Coming into skandasana at the front of your mat. So we'll be here for a little bit. Settle yourself into the pose. Set yourself up so it's sustainable.
Use your right tricep to open up and draw that right knee back. And inhale, slowly transition your skandasana to the back left leg. Again, using your hands if you'd like to to get there. Inhale, come back forward, skandasana to the front. Long extended left leg. And then bring your hands down, walk them forward, coming back into a lunge, left heel lifts, and then heel toe the right foot across, setting yourself back into pigeon pose. Toes flexed, walk the left leg back and long. Maybe setting it down, inhale, pull your chest up and forward, and exhale. Right here, again, if you used any props on the first side, set yourself up in the same sustainable manner, maybe putting a block underneath the right glute, or bringing the block to set your forehead down upon as you come forward into sleeping pigeon. So you set your forehead down. And you find yourself sitting in the stillness of this posture. Notice how the energy might start to shift. Maybe the vibrations, the spanda start to slow a little bit. The anxiety of setting yourself into this pose, into that right hip, and start to ease yourself gently into it. Continuing your ujjayi breath. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly lift your head. Walk your hands in. Place your palms down. Tuck your back toes. Lift your left knee and step back, press back, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, slowly walk yourself to the front of your mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, press into your shins, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Draw yourself deeper into your fold. Inhale, pull up halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, this time come all the way up to standing. Reach your arms up overhead. And exhale, plant your hands down in heart center. I'm going to shift this camera angle just slightly. Oh, hey, little spider. We got a little bit higher of a view. Let's see. Okay, cool. We still got the mat. All right. So from here, we're going to lift up into balancing posture, Rikasana tree pose. So with, and I'll mirror you. So with the weight down on the left leg, start to bend the right knee. Actually, grab your strap first. Let's do this with the strap. This is nice. All right. So right heel lifts. And then lift the right leg up. Reach down with your left hand. Pull that right knee. Now you're going to take your strap and you're going to lasso it around your foot. You don't need to have a long strap. Pull the heel of your right leg as high up as you can. 
and then let it fold open so the top of your right foot actually starts to fold over the quad. Now keep holding the strap with your left hand, bring your right hand around behind you, grab that strap. Press more through your standing leg. And if you feel real, real wobbly, you can always do this with your back against a wall for a little extra prop. Open your right shoulder back. You can keep the left hand down or reach it up overhead. You can inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale, see if you can draw that right shoulder again, back in and down, integrate it into the spine. One more time, inhale. And exhale, with your hands extended, bring it down. Shift the strap into your left hand, release your right. Unlasso that foot and bring it down to the mat. Step out, hip width. Inhale, reach your arms up, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, pull hands up your shins, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale again, hands to shins, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold. Bring your strap with you, inhale, come all the way back up to standing. And now start to shift the weight into the right foot. Lift the left heel up and then the left foot up. Reach down with the right hand, bring that foot up. Take your strap, bring it across and then place it as high up as you can. Keeping a little gentle bend in your standing leg, that is going to help have something to a crease to kind of nestle the edge of your foot into. So start by moving the strap into the right hand, setting up, starting to press that leg towards straight. So you have the strap to pull and lift that foot. Then left hand reach around the back, grab the strap. Now some of you might actually be able to get your toes. Uh, so if you don't need the strap, you can let it drop but that bind is a little bit of a doozy. So I, I like this strap. Right. Feel now your left shoulder starting to open up. Keep pressing down through the right foot, coming towards straight. If it feels safe, maybe start to lift the right arm up. Draw your navel in. Keep your core stacked. So hips. Tummy and navel, diaphragm, shoulders, even up into the very top of the spine. So think about the palatal plane or the roof of your mouth, shifting it back so it's not jutting forward. Inhale, exhale, and deep breath in, out. Inhale, exhale, bring your lifted arm down, take the strap out from the left, and let that leg gently come down. Pressing both feet down, inhale, stretch arms up, and exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway, exhale, fold. And inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, fold. So at the front of your mat, find both of your blocks and bring them to frame your mat. And then plant your hands down, step yourself back into a downward dog. Maybe shifting through planks so you have placement of your hands and feet. Press your finger pads down, feel the pads of your feet rooting down into the mat. Take an inhale and exhale. And deep breath in 
and out. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Bend your knee, heel to butt. Exhale, thigh to ribs. Come forward and plant your foot down. Bring the right foot in, setting up for Virabhadrasana one. Shift forward, reach forward, inhale, come up. Palms towards each other, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Keep pressing through the outside edge of that back foot. Exhale. Notice your energy. And now start to straighten your front foot. Shift right hip forward, left hip back. Draw your navel in. And keeping a gentle bend in that front knee, start to reach forward. Challenge yourself to lower your torso about parallel with the ground. Keeping a gentle bend in that front knee so you're not locking it out. Inhale. And then exhale, bring your hands down. Find your blocks. Press your hands into the blocks, maybe at medium height. Again, shift your right hip forward, left hip back. Inhale. And exhale. Holding this pyramid pose. Now heart and hips are on the same level. How do you feel the energy moving in your body? Breath in and out. So they start to shift forward, bending your left knee. And this time walk it into the middle of the mat. So a little bit to the right side. Lift your back heel, spin it down so it's now parallel with the back of your mat, setting up for Virabhadrasana two. Cartwheel your right arm up and then bring your left arm up. Inhale, exhale. Virabhadrasana two. This pose for me screams expansion, <laughs> but also so much integration, so much grounding through the feet and through the hips to really reach and expand through the arms. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Shifting into reverse warrior. Left arm up, right arm down the back leg. Keep the left knee bent. Bring it even more forward. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. This time starting to straighten the left leg. Reverse triangle pose. Press down firmly through both feet. Think about a line of energy originating at the left foot, coming up the left side body and out through your left fingertips. Now your gaze can be up or you can let your neck release. Inhale, keeping that straight left foot come back up. And we're going to shift into triangle pose, trikonasana. So have a gentle bend, shift forward. So you're moving within one plane. I like to think of, you know, a, a sheet of glass on the front and back. Then starting to dip the left hand down, find the block that's on the outside edge. You can place that block a little bit higher or lower, medium height, press down through your left hand to reach up through the right fingertips. Inhale and exhale. Deep breath in. Where do you feel a lifting energy? Where do you feel a grounding energy? Do you maybe feel like you need to make adjustments, balance? Is there expansion? Is there expression? <laughs> Start to reach that top arm overhead. Pinky down, thumb up. Reintegrate in the shoulder. Drawing back slightly. And then bring your right hand all the way down. Bend your knee. 
in the front and step back downward facing dog take an inhale exhale and inhale and exhale resetting ready for the next side right leg lifts inhale exhale bend heel to glutes side to ribs shift forward and plant the right foot down over to the right side bring the left leg in setting up for virabhadrasana one inhale reach your arms up exhale really grounding through the legs finding a stable base inhale exhale inhale start to straighten the front leg lift the kneecap if you can and then exhale fold forward hands coming to parallel over the ground inhale exhale hold engage your core use it to lift you up inhale and then exhale hands down finding pyramid pose hands under blocks pull the right hip back draw the left hip forward once your hands come down and find something stable does that bring a more upon a grounding like energy another breath in and then exhale start to bend your right knee heel toe that foot across the midline of your mat peel the back left heel up and then rotate it more so it's grounded heel to the inside of the back arch sweep your left arm forward lift up into virabhadrasana two warrior two inhale and exhale Again, what energy comes in when you hold your body in this posture? You feel maybe a little bit lighter. Has your energy as a whole shifted since you started this class? Start to transition into reverse warrior. Inhale. Right arm coming up, right knee staying bent. Inhale. Exhale, go a little bit deeper into that right knee. And then inhale, start to pull that right leg towards straight. Reaching out through the right fingertips and up. Feeling even more lift, even more length on the right side inhale bring both arms up to parallel with the floor so to shift forward keeping yourself as much as you can in one plane of motion and then drop the right hand down find your block that's to the outside of the right leg keep a gentle bend in that front knee and press through your hand to lift up through the left fingertips triangle pose trikonasana again just like in half lift hips and head are in the same plane so potentially the grounding energy isn't coming quite so much from the hips but from the feet from your bottom right hand where do you feel expansion where do you feel a lifting and a grounding mixing in your body where are things swirling to find balance inhale exhale start to drop the left arm overhead stretch press more even through the right inhale exhale bring the left hand down move the blocks out of the way bend your front leg and step back downward facing dog inhale 
exhale. Inhale and exhale. Look forward, inhale, start to walk yourself to the front of the mat. Feet wide, exhale, toes out, heels in malasana. Where on earth are we gonna go from here? <laughs> All right, we're going to use that strap and start to find all of our energies at once, All right? Because that's what life is. It's everything happening at once. It's hard to pull one thing out, to focus on just one thing, to hit pause on everything else. All right, so we're going to start... All right, I'll mirror you. We're going to start on the right side. So your right elbow is going to drop back, pushing the tricep into the back way. We're going to take a bind. Um, so I like to set this up with the strap to start. So actually bring the strap around. <laughs> so it's kind of running parallel to your right leg and then kind of down and out the back. Now let's nestle that right tricep into the right knee, kind of pushing it back and find the strap. Keep your knuckles grounded down, lift your left arm up and move your gaze up to that left hand. Inhale. And exhale. Feeling a little bit of that lift, that rise, that prana. Inhale. Exhale. Flip your thumb back so it's turning out. So you see the back of your hand. Bend your elbow. Reach back. Find your strap. Now start to walk your hands as close as they can come to each other. Again, some people, fingers might touch. Even if the fingers touch, use the strap. And start to rock foot to foot. Coming up onto your heels. And you're going to keep your left foot down. Lift the right heel up and move it in towards midline. All right. So keeping this lift in your chest, you're going to press down through your left foot and then really press, rock forward and step up. So you need to find grounding, press to find lift. Now, if you tried to make that big movement and it just didn't happen, come back down, use a block, place the block underneath your right foot, come back into your bind. This is going to make it a little bit easier to step up. So once that leg is already lifted, you can rock the weight into the left foot and lift up. All right, from here... Walk your hands even closer into each other. Press down, find a pana in that grounded foot. Inhale, open your chest, draw your shoulders back. Whew. Find the balance here, the samana between the pressing, the grounding, the stability, the balancing, and then the lift. Now, expand in your chest. Draw your shoulders back. So that's the Vayana. Inhale. And exhale. Maybe make your breath audible. This is really hard. We can do lion's breath. Inhale. And then tongue out. And inhale. Tongue out as though you could touch your tongue to your chin. And inhale. Exhale. Ha. And release the strap. Ooh, bring that leg down. Shift your hips a little bit from side to side. Inhale, arms up. Toes are out. And exhale, drop right back down into your malasana. All right, all of them. Okay. Set your strap up now to the outside of your left leg. So it's at a diagonal kind of coming back right about the middle of your body. 
hands together at heart center. Come back in. Ah, you can do this if you'd like. And you know that you did like using the block. Just right now, bring that foot up onto the block. Then bringing the left hand to the inside, grab a hold of that strap, knuckles down, push your triceps into the inside of your knee, and inhale, right arm up, gaze up. Again, you can still do this with your foot on the block. Inhale. Nice. And then start to rotate your wrist, thumb out, pinky in, so you see the back of your hand, bend your elbow, Go back, find that strap. Now, if it's really hard to get that strap with your foot on the block, then come down, grab it, and then set yourself back up. Walk your hands as close as they'll come. Open here. Then lift your left heel, walk your right foot into midline, pressing that foot down. So you feel that up on a downward and then we're going to lift up. So you can never lift unless you're pressing into something. That's why prana and apana are just uh, symbiotic. They, they work together. All right. So inhale, exhale, press to lift, come up, re-cinch up on your strap. Start to find your balance between that apana and prana. Then grabbing hold of the strap, draw shoulders back, expand, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale. All right, are we ready to make an expression? Lion's breath, inhale, tongue to chin, ha! Inhale, tongue to chin, ha! <laughs> it's fun. One more time, inhale, exhale, ha! All right, release that strap. Let the other foot come down. The other shoe drop, if you will. Roll your hip. Feel the swirling, feel the balance. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Bring palms together, exhale, come down into Malasana. Hands down behind you. Extend your legs. I need to pivot and swirl. Use your two blocks underneath your knees or tilted to support your thighs. Come to lie down on your back. For this Shavasana, place your hands wherever you feel like you need some more of that energy. So expansion, arms out, rising, uplifting hands at chest, and maybe over your hips to ground, come back to center. If you'd like to, you can hum or make a brahmery sound with each exhale for the energy of expression.
And as your heart rate starts to drop down, notice if there's still a tingling like sensation at your skin, an energy pulsating off your body. how the energy that you are giving off now is maybe different than how you came into this class lying on your back. Maybe pick out mentally the poses where your energy started to really shift what resonated in your body tonight? What did you need? So that as you move off of this mat, you can come back to these tools, the energetic shift, the feeling, the winds, those five winds within you. Slowly draw your knees up, moving the blocks out of the way. Roll onto one side. Press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands together to heart center. I think the most important thing to remember is that you don't need an external additive. You don't need something else to make change. All of your tools, all of the things that you need, you already have with inside of you. I hope getting curious about those five values and starting to feel them and focus in on the energies inside your body and help bring light into your life off the mat. Draw your hands up to third eye center. Be curious. Follow your bliss. Namaste. Namaste.